This is Hidden Killers Week in Review. A look back at the most prolific stories of the week. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. Featuring author, psychologist, and daily contributor, Siobhan Scott. Did his family have any clue what went on in that basement? You know, because there were actually descriptions of having devices to suspend women from the ceiling. I mean, you know, it was yeah. just horrifying. That's where you go back and you got to start wondering a little bit. Asa, how do you not know that there's this stuff how in your you basement? Not? Yeah, yeah. And and we don't know. Maybe uh, Asa is is not the brightest bulb in the room and yeah. just never went down there. But there's a but lot yeah. of reason. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying she was involved, but again, to be that oblivious to what's going yes. on literally beneath your nose to Something that level. Something is wrong. Yeah. Like, I mean, maybe it was abuse. Maybe she would get the crap beat out of her if she goes down there. So she just never did. I mean, there's a lot of logical reasons why she could not or why she didn't know these things or just was willfully ignorant uh, for survival. I don't know. But I think there's a lot of questions uh, that that still need to be answered. I call that a a negative hallucination where somebody just it seems unable to see something that's right in front of them. So it could be that there's psychological problems with her. We, we don't know yet. What? But the other thing that I thought was fascinating is that um, he made references with specific page numbers to John Douglas's books, the mm-hmm. former FBI profiler yeah. who wrote Mind Hunter and, and several other books. And And I've always said that for normal people, we read about some of these awful crimes and the awful murders, and our gut reaction is horror. Yeah. But there is a certain percentage of people out there who are attracted to it and find it, you know, I want to model myself after this. And then they use some of this information to become better killers. And yeah. he was clearly in that category. That's so scary. I mean, I remember like reading how to fr- win friends and influence people. And, and I took a highlighter to parts because like, oh, these are interesting things too. Yeah. To live by, uh, you know, many years ago. I can't imagine doing that to Mindhunter. Like, oh, this is, I mean, unless I'm like referencing a case and it's something I'm talking about. Right, right. It shows that distorted thinking that, you know, this person is a different sort of animal. This is a predator. He is not a normal human being, but he role played. You know, these guys can be very, very good at pretending to be fine, upstanding, normal people. And it's it's horrifying to get into their minds. I had to eventually, in in my forensic work, I had to eventually say, you know, don't give me a sadist. You yeah. know, I can handle, I can handle other kinds of criminals, but sadists, it's just too disturbing for me. I I have nightmares at night and I don't need to do that. This reminds me so much of Dennis Rader. Um, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's like another version of, like they could be brothers, uh, I, I think. I mean, in terms of what they did, the way that they were able to carry on a life of a family and nobody's yeah. the wiser for all of these years. And that's a good example there. That family there is a good example of being unaware of, of yeah. what was going on around you uh, with, with this type of a, a criminal. Um, it, 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 it's, it's, it's just disturbing how how similar they seem to be. And obviously, we, we don't see a lot of these. At least we don't catch a lot of these because right. I think maybe catch is the operative word is because they're so good at hiding. Do you think uh, he ever had a plan here, uh, uh, Rex, that he thought he would get caught at some point and what to do when that happens? I I think maybe he was grandiose enough to think he wasn't going to get caught. You know, he had done this for so many years he obviously was thinking through, um, you know, washing out the body cavities, everything to remove any DNA. I mean, it was just, you know, I think this was a guy who really didn't want to get caught and took great pride in his work and thought that he wasn't going to get caught. So it probably surprised him when he did. And it's someone who did get caught. How how does society get in front of some of these monsters before we discover there's this trove of, you know, we know six now. I'm going to guess we're probably in yeah. the, the teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, maybe hundreds yes. at yeah. the end of the day. Um, I mean, the, he seemed to operate completely uh, unscathed without anybody knowing anything. Uh, is yeah. there is there a way to ever kind of get in front of these this sort of thing uh, so they're not able to operate the way that they do and, and to stop it far earlier in the tracks? 
Yeah, I, I think we are doing um, a, a really good job with catching murderers quickly. You know, if indeed Koberger is guilty, if they did not have the forensic evidence and the ability with DNA and genetic genealogy, they wouldn't have caught him. And might he have killed more people? Yeah, in all likelihood. So there were many more serial killers active in the 70s, 80s, and even into the 90s. But once we got DNA technology, we're not seeing nearly as many. It's dropped dramatically. And so I, I think, you know, let's pat the law enforcement efforts on the back because they are doing some good. Yeah. And we've just got to continue to, I think that's the thing about educating people about this stuff. We've got to look closely at people that we may know I, you know, now I sound paranoid when I'm saying that, not talking about my husband, but, you know, I, I think fun everybody. fun conversation at dinner tonight, honey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can I look at what's on yeah. your computer? You know, <laughs> but I, I think particularly with kids, if they're into violent porn, I mean, parents be diligent. You know, we've got to get people early on. If you see red flags in in kids and teenagers, call it out, get some help. And yeah, could could this have been prevented in some way? We, we may never know. But my God, at least he was stopped at this point. Yeah. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.